Hey, this is Hatter, and I see that people have been enjoying these How Does It Work series videos, so let's keep it going. Today we're going to cover flip-flops. What are they good for? How do they work? What are a few methods for making them? I hope you enjoy, and let's get started. So to start, let's talk about uses for flip-flops. Think of these as automatic levers. If you have a lever in a circuit and you want that lever to be controlled by redstone or some detection circuit or something, this is where you want a flip-flop. These are the fundamental way of storing data in Minecraft. Flip-flops basically take an event and switch between on and off. Just like a computer, these store data in one or zero form. The term flip-flop is actually used to describe these circuits in your computer or phone. The place I most often use flip-flops is doors, lights, and things that you want to turn on and off from two different entrances. Or you can use them in redstone machines to turn off one step and turn on the next. So let's get into designing a few controllable levers. To start with, we're going to need to have something that we can change in the world that locks in place. For that, I really can think of three different things that hold data after a world reset. The first is simply a redstone block in its position. It'll save its spot in the world when you save the game, and it can be moved. The second is an item in a hopper or a dropper, or any other container. And finally, we have the locked repeater. We covered that in the last episode. Now, there may be other ways to hold data that I'm not thinking of, but generally these are the ways that I know of and know that will actually be saved in the world file. The position of blocks, the content of a, stor a storage container, and the locked state of a repeater are all saved. So now we need to get into some circuits that can actually manipulate this. We're going to start with the redstone block. Redstone block based flip-flops are generally um, used in Java because they're super simple there. In Bedrock they're a little bit more complex. I'm going to show you the smallest one that I have seen, and this was shown to me by Kex on my Discord. I really like this one. It uses the soft inversion features of the, of the piston, and the fact that the piston can soft invert signals from a redstone block. This is... This only works on, on Bedrock due to the soft inversion feature, and it wouldn't work on Java. So let's do a quick build on this. The first thing we do is put down two blocks of choice. And we put two pieces of redstone dust on top of those blocks of choice. Now, you can go down below your machine at this point and clip the edge of the redstone and place the piston facing downward. Now we're going to put obsidian on the bottom side of the piston and redstone torches on the side and then a redstone block on top. The last two sticky pistons get placed on top of those torches we just placed. And just like that we have a simple flip-flop. Like I said, this version... Like I said, I like this version, and I've made a one wild tileable version. So these things are generally nice when you're making a machine that you want to make many of in a row. For this tileable solution, you put two pistons side by side facing horizontally, and you make as many tiles as you would like. Then place an obsidian at the end, so technically it's a little bit wider than one wide. This is the core of our machine. The top bit is the same, so you place redstone torches on each side, you place your redstone block, and you place your sticky pistons facing the middle. Now you can take the signal out of either of the pistons using a redstone torch or out of the top 
But we can't toggle this yet. To make it toggleable, we have to go underneath and add a little circuit that powers both pistons at the same time. That is a block under one of the pistons, and diagonal a block with two torches. One on the side, underneath a block we already placed, and one on top. Now you just power this whenever you want to toggle your flip-flop. Next, let's talk about item-based flip-flops. The easiest item-based flip-flop that I know of is two hoppers facing into each other, an observer with a torch on his back, and a little bit of redstone dust. It's pretty small, and it's pretty basic. But basically, you just put these two hoppers together, an observer with a torch on his backside, and some, some dust, and you're done. You can rotate the hoppers in most any direction, and you can put a simple comparator on any side of the, of the hoppers to detect where the signal is going to come out. This isn't tileable because the redstone dust would connect between tiles. This one is silent, and I like silent things. You'll notice that most of my item sorters are silent item sorters. So if you don't want this, the piston sound, this is a pretty good option. Next we have the dropper loop version. This one is also not tileable. It isn't silent, but it's kind of the classic build. Basically you create a loop of three droppers and a hopper. One item gets passed into the, from one hopper to the next and then pushed up into the top hopper and then drops down using that hopper. Again, you can pull signal from either of the bottom droppers. The input is sent into the bottom dropper. It has to be a hard powered solution, so all three uh, droppers get powered at the same time. So this is a repeater or an observer or a direct button or lever input. And whenever you toggle this, it makes a small click sound. But it does work, and it's kind of classic. Now finally, we will talk about a repeater-based flip-flop. These are basically an inversion clock that have a short pulse to lock one of the repeaters. Well, we'll cover the inversion clock in a different video, but for now, we'll build up a clock using a repeater, a torch, and redstone dust set up like this. Then we will power the repeater facing the side of the repeater in the clock and just send a pulse when we want to unlock it. I use an observer with a torch in the setup most frequently, but you could use something else if you wanted to. The inversion clock doesn't need to be stacked. You can do it horizontally using a bunch of redstone dust like this. To do the same locking, to do the same locking uh, circuit, a repeater and an observer and a torch are used just like this. You can use any other shortener that you want as well, but that's what I use. Now that you have that, you can put modes into your redstone machine or stages or phases or you can remove big delay circuits on your doors that automatically cause them to close behind you. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. It helps the YouTube push this video to others who may like it. Share if you want and subscribe for more. Anyway, this is Mad Hatter and I'm out. Bye!